A while back I did a video on how to use the Excel functions left, right, or mid to extract part of the data out of, out of a cell. And I got a question from someone um, who uh, was trying to figure out how to extract data when you don't necessarily know the starting point uh, in the middle of the cell. For example, he would have a text string like this that had the name of an exercise followed by a number you know, and then a, a series of, of other exercises and numbers just like that. Now, the problem is that they weren't always in the same order or like this they might not even um, all be present. So then the question becomes how do you how do you extract it when you don't know where it's going to fall? Well let's start by going back and looking at how the mid function works. So here um, we've got a simple formula using the mid function that just says look um, look at cell A2 go to the 18th character and then give me two characters and you can see that it gives us 30 just like we want but when you start switching things up you know, then it stops working so what we have to do is we have to find the starting place um, and then we can we can do basically the same thing but we have to calculate where to start from so over here I've got an example of how to use the search function you can see here, find text, that tells us what text we want to look for, so we're going to look for curls and a colon. Within text, it tells us where to look, so we're going to look in cell A3. And the starting number we can leave blank because we just want to start from the beginning. So if we take that formula right there, copy that, escape out of there, then we can come over here and we'll replace the 18 with that, but you notice over here that the answer of that was 1 because we've got curls at the beginning. So if we take two characters after um, the first character, we're not still not going to get what we want. So we also need to add to that the number of characters of our search text or, or curls in the colon. So if we add a plus 6 on the end, then we get the right number. And we copy that down and down here we get 30 just like we wanted. Now at this point we've got a, a working formula but we would have to rewrite it for each of the different exercises. So um, we can make a few changes to make this formula a little more flexible. Okay, So let's copy this down one more time. And here let's replace curls with cell C1 since that's where we've got our column and we have the word curls up there and then we'll replace the number 6 with LEN C1 close that parenthesis that gives us the length of whatever is in cell C1 so you see now we're still getting the right answer. Now, in order to make that a formula that we can really copy down and over to the other columns, we'll need to make some absolute references. So here, right at A5, we know we always want to search in column A, so we'll make that reference absolute. And then we'll come over here, and we know we want row 1 to stay the same, even though the column can change as we copy that over. Again, back to A5, and C1. Now we can copy that. We can copy that over, and it will automatically adjust by looking at the column headings. Or we can copy that down, and it still works. So, so far, so good. Um, but now, trying to take other, you know, real-life considerations in. If we copy this down one more time, you'll see that over here, where we had five curls, that's still working. But when we had a hundred push-ups we're only getting 10 because we told it up here to just give us two characters. Um, we could come over here and change this to 3 and then that would work but that doesn't work over here um, because we're you know then we're running into the next one so let's undo those changes 
well, let's think about how we can address that. So I'm going to copy this down again. And so what we need to do here is calculate not just the starting point um, of what we want to extract, but also how many digits we want to extract. So we can do that um, by if we find the space after the exercise, then first space after the exercise name, so here it's first space after curls, and then we can find the beginning point of the exercise name and subtract that, and then find the length of the exercise name and subtract that. So here's what that looks like. So what we're telling it here, where we want to find the space after the exercise name, we tell it to search for, that's a space uh, in quotation marks, and we tell it we want to look within the text in cell A8 in this case. Now for our starting position, um, we tell it to find whatever is in cell C1 in, we look for that in A8, and that's our starting point when we start searching for the space. Then searching for the column heading, the, te the exercise name within the text is just like we did before. We're going to search for C1 in A8. And then the length, just like before, length of C1. So we can put all that together. So instead of just using the length of C1, Copy this, copy that, come back over here, I'm sorry, instead of, we're going to replace our 2 with that, and we're just going to enter, it's going to give us an error for now, then we're going to take this, and we'll copy that, And we'll say minus that. And then our last step right there. Copy that. Paste that in. Minus that. And now we're getting 5. Copy that over. And it's working again. We'll copy down. And you can see it's still working. Okay, now to add some other real life complications that get thrown into this, if we take this formula and we copy it up to here where we're missing um, we're missing some of the exercises here, sit-ups, our formula is looking at, at uh, E1, so it's looking for sit-ups in this string over here and it doesn't exist. So we get this error message. So the way you can deal with that, you can use the if error function. Basically, you wrap this whole formula inside of if error. So we can say if error, and then open your parentheses, then go all the way to the end, comma, zero, and close your parentheses. Basically, what that's saying is if this formula gives us an error, then just give zero. Otherwise, give us the result of the formula. So that takes care of that issue. Now there's one more thing that I've run into that I have not found the answer to, so if any of you know the answer, feel free to uh, post it in the comments below. You'll see that these two lines look identical, but we're getting an error here. The reason we're getting an error is that this line does not have a space following that last digit. See if I put that in there, now it works again. So the the flaw in my formula's logic is that it always looks for the space after the exercise name uh, in order to calculate the number of digits. Um, if we didn't have to allow for a varying length of digits, we wouldn't even need that part of it. Um, but if the number on the end doesn't have the space following it, my formula breaks. So if anyone has any brilliant ideas on how to fix that, I'd love to hear it and uh, just post it in the comments below. Anyway, so this shows 
you know, not just how you can combine search and mid, but it also shows how you can go about, you know, building complex formulas that, that maybe you wouldn't have just, you know, you wouldn't just sit down and write a formula that looks like that from scratch and have it all make sense. But as you build it piece by piece, uh, you can put it together and, and solve things that you maybe thought uh, you couldn't solve on your own before.